Greetings all, Ben here, East West. Just going to take a look at uh, the rate market, in particular TLT, uh, and what's going on uh, through this week, because there's been a couple of developments this week, I would suggest, uh, and a few things to have a look at. So what I'm actually going to start off here is I, I, I saw an interview on CNBC this week with Paul Tudor Jones. Uh, now, I'll, I'm going to start off by replaying that, because I think if you haven't seen it, that uh, Paul makes some excellent points and obviously he's a guy that you want to listen to because he he knows what he's talking about uh, the interview goes for about seven minutes so if you've already seen it you might want to skip ahead um, but if you haven't seen it I'd, I'd recommend we, we we have a look at it because I think it's really interesting so let's just kick it off here and have a listen to what Paul's got to say it goes for about seven minutes 40 own equities I mean there's also the question of what you think is going on in the United States with our economy, with the rest of the world, with what the Federal Reserve is or isn't going to do? It's a, it's, a, it's a really challenging time to want to be an equity investor in U.S. stocks right now. It's really hard because, again, you've got uh, the geopolitical uncertainty, which we, I think, come to live with to a certain extent. But, again, all those have the ability to, uh, to have a nonlinear outcome so something not just uh, business as usual but i think it's i think equally as much of a problem is the fiscal situation that we're facing in the united states which is going to which is going to require a completely different political mentality that's, to what that's pretty here. that's pretty telling so we're you know the possibility of a real possibility of a nuclear war is, right. is there but our fiscal situation is just as bad. That's, I mean, that, that's a statement. So, so black swans, Paul, are no, they're not black swans anymore. They're, they're actual quantifiable risks. We need a new word for black swans. There's like four or five, five of them that used to be, you didn't even have to really, if, if it happened, we're all gone anyway, so you don't worry about it. But now they're actually something that are on your radar. Well, so is a pandemic, which was on your radar in, in Davos before anyone knew the word. I, I would say the fiscal situation is very different from other cataclysmic events that we've suffered as a country. It's not Pearl Harbor, it's not 9-11, it's not COVID, where we did not see them coming. They were external shocks. The fiscal situation we have is one that's really clear, uh, and there are obvious remedies for it, and it's something that we're going to have to deal with. It's not part of the political dialogue yet, really? You're I don't think so. entitlements again. It, it, well, it's a variety of things. But so mostly, if, if you just think about what's happened in, since really in the last three or four months, we're getting ready. I don't know if we'll have a Minsky moment in the bond market. I don't know if we'll have that point of recognition. But we're going to have the grinding reality that with 122 percent of debt to GDP, as interest costs go up the United States, you get in this vicious circle where higher interest rates cause higher funding costs, cause higher debt issuance, which cause further bond liquidation, which cause higher rates, which put us in an untenable fiscal position. We, our interest bill is going to very shortly exceed our defense spending in just a couple of years. Uh, our, it's probably in four or five years, Ceteris Paribus will have the highest interest bill as a percentage of GDP that we've ever had. It'll probably be close to 20 percent of your taxes will go to pay interest right. on the debt unless we do something. So um, that has to be part of the dialogue, has to be the main dialogue for next year's presidential right. election. And right now, the, 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 the real problem is the two guys that put us in this situation, and I think that's what the bond markets kind of recognize as we get closer to primaries, are the, are, are the ones that are our choices for president. And, and can you imagine Donald Trump or Joe Biden? They're, they're the ones that start this. It actually started with Trump, right? Trump in 2016 was going to come in and he was going to cut taxes and cut spending. Well, along the way, cutting taxes was a great idea, but he didn't cut spending. So he, he inherited a 2.6% budget deficit. In 2019, it was 4.8% before the pandemic, so it almost doubled. 
And then in 2020, it went to 14% with the pandemic. But he's the one who, with a strong economy, said, I'm going to double down and cut taxes. We're going to grow our way out of it. Joe Biden, when he got elected, said, ah, the sugar high is pretty good. You had two or three Oreos. I'm going to eat the entire, the entire package. Uh, and the Build Back, Build Back Better Act was really the Build Back Debtor Act. So between the two of them, we kind of added 20% of debt to GDP. Neither one of them, the people that created the problem, as Einstein said, are not the ones to fix it. He's, Neither one of them can be president. It's really, it's that simple. Is there a candidate that you like, and is also there a candidate that you think has a chance, given the numbers that we see today? Well, it's going to be really interesting. No labels will probably uh, nominate Joe, Joe Manchin. We, as a country, you know, freedom's not free, right? That's, that's the old saying. We, we, we love to laud our troops who put their, their bodies and souls in the line for, for this great country. It's clearly, we're going to have to have fiscal retrenchment. We're going to have to sacrifice. We're going to have to cut spending. We're going to have to deal with entitlements. We're going to have to change Social Security. We're going to have to limit Medicare and Medicaid. We're going to have to raise taxes on the very wealthy. We're going to have to unequivocally raise taxes. The United States right now has the fifth lowest tax take out of 40 OECD countries. So there's plenty of room for us to raise taxes. Would you have shut down the government? Were, were you with those guys that said we need to, you know, we need to take drastic measures? They, they, they say the same thing about the 33 trillion yeah. and we're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. The, the problem with them yeah. is that they only look at one side of the equation, which is that we have to cut spending. They are unwilling to talk about the other side of the equation, which is we're going to have to raise taxes. You cannot do this simply by cutting spending. We have Right now, here's what the bond market is telling you. Last year, or this year rather, we had $2.3 trillion of funding that the private sector is required to uh, find the funding for. So that has caused a 100 basis point spike in bond yields. In 2024, it's going to be $2.7 trillion in the U.S., $2.7 trillion, almost 10% of our budget is going to have to be to fund our federal, our federal spending. So the, it doesn't matter what the Federal Reserve says at this point. They've lost control. This is going to be the bond yeah. market talking and setting. Yeah, the bond market. So what's happening is, and why we're probably getting, we're probably going to go into recession sometime uh, in the first quarter of next year, probably because the bond market, simply through supply and demand, is going to deliver more rate hikes because we don't have a clearing price yet for right. long-term debt. And so those rate hikes are probably going to tip us into recession. Okay, so some interesting stuff there from Paul Tudor Jones, I would have thought. And, you know, those sort of issues are something that I've, you know, been thinking about for a long time. Um, and, and we know, of course, that when we, we look at the big picture of TLT, uh, that's exactly what's been happening. You know, the, 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 the debt's just going up and up and, and bond prices are falling further and further as, as the supply outweighs the demand. Now, we had a couple of auctions this week. The five-year auction wasn't great, but the seven-year auction was a little bit better received. So, you know, there's some of the mechanics. And then, of course, there was one other thing that happened through this week, which was also of interest. And that was uh, here on Monday, where Bill Ackman, like him, love him, loathe him, whatever, has said he's covered his bond short because basically he thinks there's too much risk in the world to have a big short position. Um, so whether or not that's right, I don't know. I mean, he's obviously taken profit on a, on a pretty good trade. Uh, but since then, you know, we, we had uh, a couple of strong days of pushing up. Um, I would suggest that this this bar here was probably the five-year auction, just keeping things a little bit more subdued in the bond market. And then, you know, we've pushed back a little bit to finish out the week. 
Uh, so, you know, as things sit for TLT, we, we've just sort of held and we're just now chopping, deciding what we're going to do next. Now, I've made the case, I'm not going to try to make a case that this is five waves down, but I've made the case on the big picture a few times that I think, like it, love it, loathe it, whatever with Elliot, but th th that the structure looks like it is beginning to play out and that we've got this divergence creeping in. Now, so for me, I wouldn't be exactly trying to pick a bottom, um, but I'll just go, I'll just move out to a monthly again. Now, I think the last time I looked at this candle, this is still the monthly, so we've still got a few days to go. But if this turned into a hammer, which would basically mean we'd need the market, you know, it, it looks it looks fairly forlorn. I don't think it's much of a chance. But if we got a close here above $87.71 and this turned into a hammer, I'd be sitting here thinking, well, okay, that looks like a bit of a sign when we don't have that we've got a few more days to go and like I said I don't think that this is going to end up being a hammer but who knows it might but we also know that we're on a monthly we're diverging and that on a weekly we're, we're, we're diverging as well and then you could almost say that on a daily we're, we've also got divergence so across monthly weekly and daily time frames we have divergence creeping in but I'm not seeing that one telltale smoking gun candle that would make me think, aha, now we've got something. So just thinking about this, I mean, I, like I said, I, I'll, I'll just take this Elliot off. I just want to see on a, on, a, on a very basic level, I just want to see um, a, a change of character. I mean, this doesn't look uh, hugely um, constructive just yet. But basically, I, I just want to see the market do this, okay? Just to make me think, okay, well, we're starting to push away from this bottom and we're starting to put in some sort of constructive trend, which we don't have yet, of course, but that would be the sort of thing that I'd just be basically looking for. Now, I've also pointed this out a few times because I, I think it's important that I, I, I want to see that, but this is on a weekly, of course. I, I need to see price get to the other side of this cloud. And there's still a lot of water to go under the bridge yet. It could be into next year before we get... I think it almost certainly... I mean, at some stage, we will get on the other side of the cloud. But I think almost certainly it's going to be not till next year that we that we manage to do it. And in the meantime, you know, you listen to what Paul just said. There's nothing to say that this is the bottom that we're not going to come down even further. You know, that definitely can't be ruled out. But against that, of course, we've got the geopolitical situation, which is... Well, I wouldn't say it's improving, you know, whether or not it's going to be enough to cause a spike and a flight to safety and a flight to quality into, into US bonds is still hard to say. I mean, there's, there's just opposing forces going on here at the moment. But the, the bottom line is I can't see a smoking gun here. But not, not all's lost. Let's, um, I, I've been watching the futures because that's primarily what I trade. I've been watching the bond futures pretty closely, as I always do. And let's just have a look at what they've done this week. So this is the 10-year note futures. And the one thing that's got me at the moment is that we've tested. This box here represents roughly about a 5% yield. Okay, so that, but we've tested, we've tested, we've had this. We've tested again and we're back here. So what do we do next week? Do we, do we get through this? Because if we get through this, well, I'm starting to think, oh, okay, well, maybe there's something doing here. And, and now we're going to come back and have a look at this area back up here okay so I, I wouldn't say we've got a change of character but the one thing that it, it, it I've seen is that we've tested this this five percent area in the, in the in the yields numerous times now and we've held now this was the push away um, primarily you know this this was sort of after the GDP number but of course there was components of that suggesting that the PCE uh, numbers were going to uh, soften off a bit. So these were the, 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 the PCE numbers that came out today or, um, on Friday. So they're pretty much in line. Um, not a smoking gun. So not enough to propel the market, I think, through through this resistance. So we are still just stuck in this range. But we've just held these bottoms. Okay, we've just, the market's shied away from 5% in the 10 years. 
And when we come in here and look at the 30 years, you could make, uh, we don't, I wouldn't say we've got to change a character yet, but we've got this, okay? We, we need this to keep going, all right? But what we do have at a very basic level is the start of potentially an uptrend. I mean, there's a hell of a lot of water to go under the bridge yet. But just looking at this as an hourly chart of the bond futures, we just want to see this get broken, okay? I'm not going to try to put any sort of LED into this. I'm just looking at the basic swing structure of the market. We've got this little wobble coming in here. I'm not going to try to digest that. But if we can just get above these highs, then we're going back and we're looking at all thinking, okay, okay, what do we got here? We've got a market that's starting to trend back the other way. Now, just zipping over here, look at the yield on the 10-year and the 10-year bond. And the same thing applies here is we've still got this divergence creeping in. Now, one thing I'm looking at, um, some people might actually call this the one. I don't think it matters too much but at, at this stage. But, you know, we were looking at this as being an extension. Now, the one thing that the Elliott Wave principle tells us and so if, you, if you're tuning out, that's fine. You, not everyone likes Elliot. But the one thing it does tell us is one of the ways we can identify a top is wave four, the bottom of wave four, will be at about the 38% retracement mark of the entire impulse. So what that means is if we bring in a Fibonacci retracement here, okay, if we start this from the bottom, and what we want to do is put the 38.2 right on the bottom of that four, Okay, you can see how close we got here, just, just shy of that, of that. Now, you know, the good book tells us that that is, is, helps us to identify when we might have the top of wave five. Now, we know we're diverging, okay? But at the same time, I've got to listen to what Paul Tudor Jones says, and that remains fresh in my mind. So nothing says that this is the top. We just look for telltale signs that, we've, that this becomes a candidate, okay? We need. We, we've seen that. We've seen the futures just hold that level. We've seen the market just shy away from this five percent line a few times now. Okay. We don't really have a change of character yet. We're just locked in this little battle zone here. Okay. We just need to move either back through it or back above it. We're not there yet, but there are signs. So, so that that that's what I'd say. That I just think that the rate market is. Sh starting to show some signs okay so even just looking at this up close and personal it the trend through here isn't you know I, I, I there's nothing sort of that's I mean you could sort of yeah that sort of ticks through a little bit maybe you could take a trend off this but one of the things you can do uh, when there isn't like a, a, a perfectly clear geometrical trend channel is to just put a, a, a regression channel on the whole thing okay This would be, I'd just be looking at this move up and, and, you know, look, if I start to see this sort of thing, well, then I'm, I'm starting to get even more confident that we've, we've got a peak in place here. But we, we, we're not there yet. Like I said, this at the moment, it's just about identifying candidates for tops. And you can make the same sort of case and do the same sort of thing here for the 30 year. Okay, like, I don't know if you could take it from there. That's probably not going to really give us much if we if we sort of put a regression channel from here to here um, yeah that's that's probably not as helpful but you know what we can see here is that yeah this part of the movement is super steep you know where we've come from 4.19 up to well we've, we've basically gone a percent and we've gone we've gone a percent pretty quick you know? we've, this is the end of August it's a very very steep run so even just you know this can't maintain, I don't think, in my opinion, but even just looking at that, you know, that getting on, that's pretty tight. But the same sort of thing, this, the, the general idea that we're going to start to come down and make a fresh low and that we're just locked into that little battle zone, okay? We're just down here on a four hour, but this is just you know, the sort of thing that I'm just looking at, that's the potential change of character in the short term, that we, we get that. We don't have it yet, but we'll just have to see what happens next week.
And so just to finish off, we've got the same thing with, with TLT, okay? We know that this day here was, I think this was the highest volume day on record for the, for the, for the ETF. Massive volume, okay, which is, which is kind of interesting. Maybe you can put your tinfoil hat on. Now, I, I'm pretty sure Bill Ackman is not in TLT. I'm pretty sure he's not playing it that way. But it's interesting, isn't it, that we had the biggest volume day um, on record, okay, here last, uh, that was last week. Um, and then he comes out and says, oh, I've covered my bond short. Because this, as we've looked at that on the accumulation and distribution oscillator, this this looked like buying. But, we, you know, whoever's bought here is, is definitely not out of the woods. And I'm not saying that I'm definitely, in fact, I'd suggest that Bill Ackman was not short TLT, he was short other instruments to to express a short bond price position, but you know, it's 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 kind of interesting, isn't it? So maybe he was buying it. I mean, I, I don't know. I wouldn't have a clue. I, I once again, I doubt it. But just to finish off here, looking at the cycles, you know, we've got a low here on day sixty three. So that would probably fit the bill, but we need to get back above this ten day moving average and just see how the dust settles. And then I'd just bring in this green line because that will be, this is the 10 week average, okay, just on the daily chart. So we would need to see a close above this, okay. So what you'd want to see in a, in a cyclical sense is that we can get above here and make a new cycle low that does not fail and then get another cycle that closes above the 10 week moving average. So if we get this sort of thing, then you're coming back here going, okay, this looks like a daily cycle low. And when we look at the big picture, that would make another ICL, an intermediate cycle low, that would probably be a yearly cycle low. So that would be a big cycle low. But we, we've, there's a little bit of water that's got to go under the bridge before we get to that. But these are just the signs that we're looking at. And that would tie into the Ichimoku on a weekly basis where we could come back here and we'd want to see you know, the rally a pullback and then above that and then we'd be going okay ICL and a yearly cycle low as well so that that would be kind of what we'd look for but we we don't have it yet so look an interesting time we have to see what happens over the weekend of course the one telltale sign will be the reopen on Sunday night or Monday morning my time the one thing I have noticed the pattern has been the last couple of Mondays is that straight away there's been quite heavy offers especially for that time of day and that time of week heavy offers on the open of the 10-year note futures so i'm looking to see if that repeats uh, if it doesn't that could just be another sign that you know people aren't as keen to sell but we'll have to wait and see so who knows what happens over the weekend but uh look enjoy your weekend and um good luck and we'll we'll, we'll chat next week um see you next time bye for now